Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I've got big news to share with you guys. First up, uh, Bitcoin right now I did see a pullback. It looks like the second scenario we talked about where dumping downwards versus going up has happened. In addition, uh, Grayscale has bought near $100 million in Bitcoin within a 24-hour period. Uh, we see the likes of Galaxy Digital getting into Bitcoin mining. Coinbase has integrated the ability to track your taxes with Coin Tracker. So lots to get into. Before we break it down, go ahead, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, Bitcoin right now at $36,000. So like I said, we saw kind of a mini dump there. And yes, in yesterday's video, I talked about two possible scenarios. The breakout we were seeing, we just continue upwards or the potential for another whale just dumping on us. And uh, these things are par for the course, of course. Uh, I know I said, of course, there are two times. <laughs> these things are par uh, for the course. And um, we could go a bit sideways. We could go a bit lower and then work our way up to 50,000. But zoom out, macro level, these are tiny movements, right? We shouldn't even really be paying attention to it. I know I'd like to show you guys these charts as to what's happening. But if you're not day trading, they don't matter. Macro level, we are the hodlers, we are the long-term hodlers, and we are looking at things macro level. So Bitcoin will continue to rise in value throughout the year, but it could go sideways for a while. It could test this, you know, this respective support level for the next couple of weeks, honestly. So you have to be mentally prepared for all of that, just so you know what's happening. But um, you know, it's it's expected because you can't have a parabolic run up where you have thousand dollar green candle days over multiple days and, and over weeks and you don't see some sort of correction in the building of support levels. This is healthy. I know it's not ideal as someone who's holding it, right? Bitcoin and other cryptos, but this is healthy for the growth and maturation of the market. So just keep that in mind. Now, one thing's for sure. The institutional investors are buying up, and I like what Binance's CEO, CZ, said, and I've interviewed him. He said, funds are starting to gobble Bitcoin at $1 billion at a time. Yeah, they're putting record-breaking amount of money into uh, Bitcoin and crypto. He said, it will, con it will become increasingly harder, more expensive for average people to own and, and essentially buy one Bitcoin. Don't be the last. And the news he's talking about is one of the... The, the, the grayscale of Canada. And I've interviewed one of the guys there. Um, I'll break it down for you. But um, Barry Silbert did confirm this news here. Grayscale bought 2,612 Bitcoin worth $98 million over the past 24 hours, which equates to 2.9x of the daily Bitcoin mined. Their total Bitcoin uh, uh, under management now sits at $23.69 billion. My goodness, this is a chart breaking down their holdings of Bitcoin. Ridiculous amount of Bitcoin, guys. And they're seeing the demand, right? Because there's no ETF. You may be asking, why are these people going to Grayscale? Well, Grayscale is the closest thing to an ETF because they have a trust that people can go and uh, get exposure to Bitcoin. And if they don't want to deal with the custody and even the buying of it, right, they go through Grayscale and Grayscale provides the white glove service. You know, once an ETF comes along, you're going to see the big players offer it as well. But that's why Grayscale is seeing the amount of money that they, they are, guys. And uh, their respective version in Canada called 3IQ. And you guys may recall, I interviewed... Um, here, uh, let me make sure I get his title, the managing director, Tom Lombardi at 3IQ. I interviewed him a month ago, and they, they essentially have put uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum on the Toronto Stock Exchange. So they have a respective trust and fund that people can invest in just like uh, Grayscale. So once again, that's why I call them Canada's uh, great, the, the, the grayscale of Canada, essentially. So Canada's first public Bitcoin fund hits $1 billion. 3IQ's Bitcoin QBTC fund has surged 900% in market cap since October 2020, breaking a $1 billion milestone. Huge, guys, huge. I know it's not the same compared to um, uh, grayscales, but remember, grayscale started before also the United States is the largest capital market in the world. But if you start seeing these funds pop up around the globe, maybe next is Hong Kong and I don't know wherever else, right? Um, you're going to see a lot of money flow into Bitcoin and crypto. And that's why I hold Bitcoin in my portfolio. That's why Paul Tudor Jones called it the fastest horse in the race. 
there is tremendous upside here and the ability to make significant return. Now, Galaxy Digital is launching a new Bitcoin mining business unit. Guys, I've been talking about it for years ad nauseum. The Bitcoin, the battle for Bitcoin's uh, hash rate, the control of that hash rate is going to become a geopolitical thing. Superpowers will be going after that. China right now has a big pool of uh, miners there. The, the world's largest mining pool is being built in Texas in the United States. And we just saw digital currency group Barry Silbert. They're investing in Bitcoin mining. We know Peter Thiel is investing in Layer 1, which is doing Bitcoin mining in Texas. Now Galaxy Digital getting involved. So crypto investment company Galaxy Digital announced Friday that it is launching a new suite of financial services and tools for the Bitcoin mining sector. What's more, the Toronto listed firm is also mining Bitcoin for itself via a third party. They're double dipping a bit, a bit here, right? US based data center, which is hosting hardware owned by Galaxy. Galaxy's new business unit, dubbed Galaxy Digital Mining, aims to offer one stop financial services for miners, according to a statement published Friday. Now, listen to this Amanda Fabiano, who previously served as Fidelity Digital Assets. Director of Bitcoin Mining will lead the unit. So looks like they poached her and uh, we know Fidelity has been mining. So guys, some of the biggest institutions on the planet are mining Bitcoin. And there's still people going around talking about uh, different types of FUD, Bitcoin's going to zero and this and that. The big money is here. And once they're here, you know the government's not going to go against that. If you understand how politics and campaign donations and, and all of lobbying works in the United States, you will know the headlines about Bitcoin's going to zero, Bitcoin's going to crash to zero, and uh, the government's going to stop Bitcoin. No, they're not. Uh, because money talks. Money has it brings the power here, guys. And when you have Fidelity with trillions of assets under management, when you have BlackRock coming out and saying they're going to offer crypto services, when you got backed, right, uh, powered by the New York Stock Exchange parent company involved, you got the likes of these billionaire hedge fund managers, Paul Tudor Jones, Stanley Druckenmiller, Bill Miller. You, th you think the government's going to go against those guys? Come on, guys. You, you, wake up. The people who are spreading fud about Bitcoin, you you have your head buried in the sand. If you, you don't want to look at the whole picture, you just focus on the negative. Um, and Bitcoin is here to stay. It, it, they're going to continue building the mining farms. Uh, the, it is going to be a geopolitical battle for it. So here, here's a quote. Bitcoin mining is the foundation of the Bitcoin network. By mining ourselves, we are able to deeply understand and solve the financial needs of miners, while also enhancing the strength of the industry and thus the strength of the Bitcoin network, Fabiano said in a statement. You are going to see more and more folks jumping into Bitcoin mining. I wish I had the respective cash to to invest in some of these companies and uh, it, that are building the infrastructure for the market. Uh, but maybe once, uh, you know, Bitcoin hits $100,000, I can probably look at doing that. Now, guys, Coinbase users can now report their crypto taxes using Cointracker. Filing 2020 taxes may be slightly less complicated for Coinbase users than it was before. This is good news because, look, you can't avoid taxes. This is this is the part of uh, investing where, you look, it sucks. I hate capital gains tax. I think it's highway robbery. But it is what it is. We got to pay the tax man until something changes, right? With just three months until the deadline for the United States citizens to declare their crypto gains and losses to the IRS, Coinbase is partnering with portfolio tracking and tax calculating platform Cointracker to make the process simpler. According to Cointracker, it's an easy way for Coinbase users to report their crypto transactions and sales. Targeted at U.S. users, Cointracker will calculate and fill out these specific forms, for example, Form 8949 and Schedule D, to declare capital gains, losses, and assets on income return, uh, income tax returns. It can be used by individuals and accountants or as part of a tax filing software program like TurboTax. Uh, Cointracker co-founder Chandan Ladha, if I'm saying his name right, said the partnership would allow for a one-click integration from the Coinbase taxes page, allowing users to calculate cap, uh, crypto gains excuse me, and losses on the platform. 
Coinbase's investment arm, Coinbase Ventures, has made an undisclosed investment in the platform. Guys, this is good. I'm going to try it out and definitely let you guys know what it looks like because I did cash out some stuff. I've you know, been clear that I uh, trade, uh, traded, um, or I should say I bought and sold and, sw and swing traded uh, uh, oh, Chainlink. Couldn't say that for a second, Chainlink. And, um, I, you know, you want to make sure you get your taxes right so the IRS is not coming after you. Uh, here we got some news from Ripple, guys. Obviously, the big SEC lawsuit, and we got some, of course, negative news as well. Grayscale has dissolved their XRP trust. So uh, now, don't get me wrong, they can easily replenish this trust. This is not a hard thing, and they weren't holding a significant amount of XRP anyway. But look, uh, uh, this is business, and these these funds and so forth have to make sure they protect their investments and their investors' money. So we'll see what happens. Like I said before i haven't done anything with my xrp it's still sitting in my portfolio and i do believe uh ripple is going to come out of this and and be able to to find a solution here so we'll see what happens but nevertheless they have um partnered with malaysia's mobile money and bangladesh's bcash and will leverage ripple net for wallet to wallet transactions so there's no talks of if they're going to use xrp or ripple odl it seems like it's more like ripple net um but we'll have to wait for more details but nevertheless their network continues to grow and they're getting the partnership so good to see these things are happening that people are still partnering with them and remember xrp and every other g20 market is a non-security it's just the united states where this is a problem and like i said with this initial lawsuit this is not just about ripple and xrp when they're done with ripple and xrp if things don't go in the right direction what do you think they're going to do next go down the list. They're going to go to Cardano. They're going to go to VeChain. Logically, logic would tell you that, right? They're going to go down the list, my friends. So just what's happening. So um, we'll have to wait and see, but this is good to see that banks and payment providers and so forth are still working with them. And uh, obviously the great skill news of uh, XRP trust being diluted here. Not good news itself, but you know, uh, you, you definitely should be aware of that. So guys, what do you think uh, will happen with Bitcoin next? Um, you know, do we uh, keep going down, move sideways and then go up? I, I think so. Um, I'm personally, and this is not financial or investment advice, I'm buying the dips just like Grayscale and these other folks are, right? Buying it up as much as they can. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.